When we're young, our parents and teachers are all trying to shape us to think and act in a certain way. And when they disagree about how to shape us, we feel torn apart, torn apart, torn apart, torn apart. Pixar is so awesome! Pixar is so great! And so we press on. Slightly hesitant, the boy climbs up by himself toward the moon with an anchor in hand. When he gets near, gravity takes over, and his world is literally flipped upside down. <laughs> this place is a strange new world for the boy, and naturally he starts exploring. He is drawn to one of the glowing stars on the ground, and something happens that seems a little magical. But, of course, he's called away to rejoin the others. They get some tools out of a shed, and we see another example of the men trying to shape the boy in their own way. They're fighting over which tool he should use. This idea is comically reinforced when the boy compares the tools to the men's facial hair. Then, something happens that stops them all in their tracks. A massive star crash lands onto the moon's surface and lodges itself into the ground. This becomes a source of conflict in the story, an obstacle to be overcome. The older men try to solve the problem the best way they know how, but nothing seems to be working. Then, the boy approaches with his eyes wider than ever, and... He's interacting with the star in a way that only he understands. And then, the biggest turning point in the whole story. The boy runs back, picks his own tool out of the bucket, and turns his hat backwards. Yes! Pixar is so awesome! Pixar is so great! This moment is so significant, even if it may not seem like it. The boy is finally done with just sitting on the sidelines and looking to the older men for answers. He's got something special. He's got a new identity, and he's determined to let it out. Turning his hat backwards is just his way of showing that. He's separating himself from the others. The boy begins to climb the massive star, and then... What an awesome climax for an awesome story. There's a lot going on here. If you'll notice, this is the first time the two men are looking up to the boy in the story, rather than the other way around. He's finally got their attention. With a single act of confidence, he solves the problem and creates something beautiful. In this magical moment, the older men are dumbfounded, and their eyes are opened for the first time. At last, they work as a team to finish their job. They return to the boat, express their pride for the boy, and look up to the crescent moon they've created together. In the end, this is a coming-of-age story. It's about the path we all follow to pursue our own identity, to find out who we really are. It's about the constant tension between dependence and independence, and really, the harmony between the two. The boy couldn't experience what he did without the men's help, and the men couldn't finish their job without the boy. The Crescent Moon suggests that this is just one phase of an ongoing cycle. One day, the boy will grow up, and his child will have to experience the same thing in a different way. All that to say, this is a powerful little story with a punch. It's got a simple premise, a universal theme, and compelling content on the surface and under. If I could tell the story in two words, it would say, you're special. And if I had three words after that, I would say, thanks for watching.
Oh, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching again. I hope you liked it. Uh, you know, if you want to, you can watch another review I did on a movie called The Time Machine I Found at a Yard Sale. And as opposed to this one, uh, it's, it's bad. <laughs> uh, it was probably the worst movie I've ever seen. So, I did a, a review on it. You can click right there. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, you know, go ahead, go ahead, check it out. I'm gonna eat popcorn. It's really buttery and good. <laughs> um, feel free to click right there. Um, come on, go ahead. <laughs>